Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have each and every one of you joining us. Those of you joining us live or that delayed broadcast, it's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, our amazing love service. Praise the Lord for God's anointing in the house and that His anointing is transferable into your house and wherever you may be. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm excited about today's message, and um, I've been just, you know, conscious by the Holy Spirit. It's like the Holy Ghost has been prompting me and reminding me, and there's reminders all around us that we are living in the last days. And uh, there's so much that the Bible talks about when it talks about the last days. And... Um, there's a lot of, you know, the Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars and bad stuff that's going to happen in the last days. And we can see a lot of that happening around us. But at the same time, for the church, it's an exciting time. For the church, it's a time where the Bible says that the Spirit of God is going to be poured out upon all flesh. And so we're going to see a great revival. In fact, through history, if you study the history of the church, the church has always done the best in times of persecution, in times of hardship. The darker it is out there, the more that, that we get to shine the light of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, I've been thinking about the, the last days and, and some of the events that are happening, and I want to talk to you today about how to remain safe in the last days. Talk about safety, not just safety, but how to prosper, how to be blessed, even when bad things are happening all around us. And um, let's just look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And just verse 1, it says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Say perilous times. Now again, the scripture talks about a great revival. But if we focus here on the perilous times, we can look around us. And we, we can sense the, the, the signs of the times. And I really believe that, that we're living in the last of the last days. And part of what the Holy Ghost is doing is He's equipping us as a ministry how to stand in those last days. He's equipping us how to minister to others in those last days. He's equipping us. Last week we talked about dominion authority. He's equipping us to take our dominion authority and so that we don't just have to walk around in fear and we don't just have to receive everything that comes our way. Even when it comes to hurricanes and storms and things like that, we have dominion authority and we can, we have power over even things like that. And so, we talked about that last week. But the Lord is equipping us in the time that we're living in. We've got people, we've got a time where there's so much terrorism. Another bomb went off in London. And, I mean... People rising, groups rising up, and, and I mean there's religions that, whole religions are embracing violence, and there's organizations that, that the only thing that they do is to sit around and plot, how can we bring terror? And I remember I was in South Africa back in back when the country was on the brink of a civil war and the communist regime had entered in people trained in Cuba and people trained in in the at that, that time behind the Iron Curtain and they would they would take people and train them and they would specifically go in and, and put bombs in shopping centers and schools and what they would call soft 
targets for political overthrow. And there were some political things that were happening in the country that were not good. And I don't want to get into that, but the fact is that, that terrorism, you know, it's never the answer. Uh, but I'm, I remember as a, as a teenager and a young man, I mean, we would go through metal detectors before you went into a shopping mall. They had metal detectors in schools. And they had, there were bombs that would go off and car bombs and different things. And, and, and I, so I know what it's like to live in that kind of environment. They don't call it terror for nothing. And so terror has been around for a long time. And we know who the author of it is. But it's rising up. And, and it, it's, there's a mindset. And it's a satanic mindset. That says that if you don't agree with me politically, I'm going to blow you to pieces. Uh, if you don't agree with, with my values, then we're going to set a bomb. And we're going to, even if I have to kill myself, I kill myself and you and everybody around me. Then there's leaders in the world today. I mean leaders of, of nations. It's not just one nation but leaders of several nations, rogue nations, that are developing nuclear power with one intent. They want to launch nuclear weapons and they want to blow up everybody that they hate. And they hate everybody but themselves. They even hate their own people. They control through hate. And so you've got people like, like the leaders of South Korea. Now I'll say this, that there's many precious people in South Korea that born again believers. There's a church in South Korea, uh, probably underground, and there are believers that are there. And so there's, we never want to condemn any nation. In fact, we don't want to condemn any person. We believe in God for every person to be born again and to receive Jesus. But there are people that have, they've been given over to a base mind. And, and they're plotting even now. And I'm telling you right now, Hawaii is in the crosshairs of one of the potential targets. There is no safe place in the natural. But today I want to talk to you about a safe place. That, that will protect you in the natural, but not just in the spiritual. And because the Lord says that we can be safe in these last days. It talks about, a, like I said, a mighty revival. Yeah. But we're living in times, the Bible says that there'll be perilous times. And there's so many scriptures that talk about all the things that we're going to be facing. And, and this, is, this is a time where so many people are going to get more and more into fear. But God is going to raise up a true church. Right now, I have no fear because I've received perfect love from Jesus and the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. Yeah. All fear. So therefore I have received His perfect love and so therefore we have no fear. In fact we have a Holy Ghost boldness and we have got a job to do in these last days. Hallelujah. And we're going to run with revival. And the enemy is under our feet. He's, he wasn't able to stop Jesus. He's never been able to stop any revival up to now. And he's not about to stop the last day's revival. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. But we need to, we need to be in Christ. We need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know what our mandate is. So that we don't get sidetracked and caught up in the traps of the enemy. Hallelujah. And um, so again, we're living in a time of nuclear threats and wars and terrorism and strange weather. and I mean, earthquakes, pestilence, disease, all these things are happening on a greater and greater scale. But there is a place of safety. In the midst of all of this. 
There is a place of prosperity and blessing in the midst of all of this. Hallelujah. It's there for us as believers and it is there for as many as that we would beckon to come in. Hallelujah. And so the Lord has got us even last Sunday and this Sunday and we'll see how it goes where He's just equipping us. He's equipping us not necessarily to believe for good weather and, and peaceful times and everything to go right. It's nice when everything goes right. But He's equipping us to thrive in tough times. To soar on the winds of turmoil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To prosper in times of famine. To live in health in times of disease. Before, it used to be, you know, it wasn't, there were sicknesses going around, but today everything is just, it's gone off the scale. I mean, people getting cancer because of the way that, that the food, a lot, a big reason is, you know, they're adding more things and food isn't food anymore. And, and that's one of the reasons. The other reason is just we're living in the last days. It's off the scales. Diseases that people haven't even heard of. I mean, so you've got that thrown in the mix too. So we have to learn how to walk this thing out and how to apply the new covenant, our new covenant in Christ Jesus for ourselves, for our family, otherwise we'll be taken out. But also for people around us. People are going to come to us and say, how on earth are, are you safe? How on earth are you, how, how did that thing miss you? Everybody got hit, but I see you didn't get hit. It didn't come near you. What is your secret? And there is a secret. And uh, I want to talk about that secret today. Everybody say secret. secret. Hallelujah. So, let's go to Psalm 91. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to just look at verse 1 and then we're going to go back. We'll end up back in Psalm 91. Because it's just, it's powerful, powerful powerful song that can help us in the day that we're living in today. Psalm 91 verse 1, and I've got the Amplified Version up. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of Almighty, yes. whose power no foe, say no foe, no foe, whose power no foe can withstand. And so today I want to talk to you about, I want to ask three questions. Where is the secret place? When David talked, oh sorry, when Moses, it was actually a song written by Moses, and we'll get into When Moses talked about the secret place in Psalm 91, what was he talking about? Where is the secret place? And how does it apply to us today? Number two, how do we dwell in it? Because we see all the promises in Psalm 91. Where is the secret place? How do we dwell in it? And then number three, third question, what are the benefits of dwelling in the secret place? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Get your seatbelts on. Get ready. You're going to be blessed today. So first of all, where is the secret place? And there's been many messages on this. But really, when we interpret Scripture with Scripture, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what God is saying. And we're not going to over-spiritualize this, but we're going to tell you clearly so that you'll know today, beyond a shadow of a doubt, whenever you think of Psalm 91, you'll know where the secret place is. Now, Psalm 90, for your information, and Psalm 91... Most scholars believe, and it's without question that they were written by Moses. Moses wrote some psalms. David wrote some psalms, some other authors. And it was written by Moses. And I personally believe 
that Psalm 90 and, and Psalm 91 especially, that, that they're prophetic psalms for the last days that we live in, given for this day and this hour that we're living in right now, that, that God used Moses to prophetically speak beyond his the place where he was to speak into our generation right now where we are today and to give us a prophetic word which equips us, provides a way of escape and, and, and just tells us how to live and walk in the midst of stuff happening around us. Hallelujah. And how to walk in victory and not be defeated. So, let me begin by just giving you the answer. Where is the secret place? And here's the answer. The secret place is not so much a where, but a who. The secret place is Jesus. Jesus is the secret place. Everybody say this with me. Say Jesus, Jesus. is the secret place. Okay, let's look at Psalm 19, verse 1. Psalm 19, verse 1 said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations. So here's the same author. It's, he's leading up into Psalm 91. Later he calls the secret place the dwelling place. But here he says, Lord, you, you, and he refers to it as Lord. Lord. So the secret place is the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord. So he said, Lord. Now he didn't know the name Jesus. He was believing for Messiah to come. But he, but he, he calls him Lord. He says, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. When we make Jesus our dwelling place, then all of a sudden in Christ, say in Christ, in Christ. I can do all things through Christ. <laughs> in Christ, through Christ. You read all the scriptures about in Christ and through Christ. And you'll find that they all match with Psalm 91. Now let's look at a, a New Testament scripture. John chapter 15 verse 4 to 7. It says this. Jesus talking. He says. Abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He who dwelleth in the secret place. And then verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I am him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Right. Say abide. abide. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Hallelujah. And so therefore we're talking about abiding. And many times before I got this revelation, I think about, well, if some people, I've heard them teach, well, the secret place, that's when you go, that's your prayer closet. I'm thinking, well, I can't abide in my prayer closet. I can go to my prayer closet, but life goes on. I got to, you know, I can't stay in there 24 7. So, how do I abide in my prayer closet? And so, it's not, it's not a prayer closet. Well, it's just that, you know, it's the Holy of Holies. Well, in a sense, that's right because, but, you know, where's the Holy of Holies right now for a born again believer? Right on the inside of you, the Bible says you are, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and, and so, but really, the Holy of Holies, uh, 
is not, it's not what it's referring to. It's referring to a person, Jesus. And we'll, we'll get into Scripture. We'll even verify that even more the more we talk about it this morning, where it's just going to become absolutely clear that the Holy of Holies, to dwell in the Holy of Holies, to dwell in the secret place, is to abide in the vine. Hallelujah. And so, how do we dwell in Jesus, our secret place? And the answer is, how we dwell? Everyone say dwell. Wow. How many that word to dwell? It, it, it's not just a place that you just throw your head down. To dwell is a place where, I mean, it's something you do on purpose. You, you don't, it's not just, you don't dwell in a hotel. You visit a hotel. But dwelling in a place is, it, 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 and actually that word to dwell, the Hebrew word, means to put down a stake and, it, it, you know, put down your roots. And, and, I mean, you're dwelling there. And the way we dwell in Christ is by faith. The Bible says the just shall live or dwell by faith. faith. The just shall live by faith. faith. The just shall dwell by faith. So dwelling faith, a dwelling place is a faith occupation. You occupy by faith. It's not a passive vacation. It's a faith occupation, not a passive vacation. So in other words, as we get into Psalm 91, I want to make it clear. Say, so, well, I'm, I'm a born-again believer. And so therefore I'm in Christ. Hmm. Yes, you, you are in Christ in, in terms of the fact that you, you're, you're born again and you're going to heaven. But we're talking about you can be in Christ as receiving Him as your Lord and Savior. But we're talking about dwelling on purpose, living by faith in Christ. And so that very word dwell, it, it means to, to exercise your faith. And to, to, to let your hand be His hand extended. To let your voice be His voice extended. To let your words be His words. So it's by faith you're stepping out. And you're doing things as the body of Christ. While you're in Christ. You're occupying. You're applying. You're engaged. You're not passive. You're engaging in things. So many believers that are in Christ have not, they don't receive their inheritance because they don't, they don't believe to receive their inheritance. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't even believe that they have an inheritance. Right. And according to their faith, that's how it is. And so many, many believers, even though Jesus paid the price on the cross of Calvary, by, our, by His stripes we have been healed. How many sick believers are there? Now, don't anybody get condemned. Sickness might come knocking at your door. But number one, you don't have to let it in. And if it climbs through a window, you don't let it have to let it come in the kitchen and make lunch. I mean, there's things... Where the enemy gets in. I was challenged this week with sickness. And is there some people like, well, if you just you'll never ever be challenged with sickness. And praise the Lord. That's wonderful. But I was challenged this week with sickness. And so why were you challenged with sickness? It's not God's will for us to be sick. But sometimes we just we there's times I was telling somebody. I said, I sinned this week. They're like, what? I said, yeah. And so, sometimes people think sin is all the big things, you know. 
a sexual sin or this or that or the other. But it sin just means to miss the mark. And the Lord doesn't want us to sin because sin gives place to the devil. And if we give place to the devil, the more that we are used in the kingdom of God, the more the enemy hates us. Yeah. And so anyway, last Sunday night, we're out around, my wife and I are driving, and she says, you want to go get something to eat? I said, well, where, where do you want to go? And we're just kind of talking. And really in my heart, I didn't want to go to a restaurant and eat. I wanted to go home and make some food. But I'm thinking, well, I want to please my wife. And she doesn't feel like cooking. And so, and she said, well, let's go to Zippy's. And so I'm just like, and Zippy's is a great place. I, they got a good, good bunch of things. And so I thought, well, I could go to Zippy's and get some vegetarian chili and try to pick the healthiest thing that I, you know. And, but as I thought about it, I just felt, no, don't go there. So I said, well, I don't really feel like going to Zippy's. Because I don't want to be all hyper-spiritual. The Lord said, don't go to Zippy's. <laughs> oh, I don't really feel like going to Zippy's. What, what do you want to go? You want to go to Ruby Tuesdays? Uh, no. You want to go to Denny's? No. And really, I want to go home, but I don't want to tell her I want to go home. So I'm thinking, so she's like, well, just let's go to Zippy's. And I said, oh, okay, let's go to Zippy's. But I'm feeling like, no, shouldn't. I'm thinking, well, that's just because that's just I want to go home. So I, really, it was the Holy Ghost. I'm pushing it down now. And here I am. And I ordered the, the vegetarian chili. And it was the only way I could describe it. It's like if, if, if you were to go and get one of those big slugs that, that crawl around after it rained and eat about three of them and they're still moving in your stomach. That's kind of how it felt. It was just like... And I was like, oh no, there was something about the off. And so... Instant food poisoning and headache kicks in and just, you know, and now what do you do with the slug you just swallowed? I mean, it's just, I mean, it's like, and I'm like, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. I should have, I should have listened to you, Holy Ghost. You told me and I didn't listen. I was trying to be nice to my wife and I gave place to the devil. That's called sin. And then, I mean, you know, I kept I speak, speaking to it. it came, maybe it came through the window, not through the front door. And I wasn't going to let it in. I was like, no, I, and I just kept putting it down. And, but sometimes when you get placed the devil, you're going to have to kick him in the tail for a few days before he gets the message to get out. So sickness might come your way. But it doesn't mean you just lay down and let it, well, I think I'm just going to go to bed and be sick now. No. Forget it. I'm not, I am the healthy, of, I'm the heel of the Lord. And I may have given place to the enemy, but right now I'm getting him out of my house. It's not a passive thing, I'm engaging. And so, you know, it took, knocked my immune system down and then some other I mean, the same window that that thing crept in, some other things crept through the same window. And in Jesus' name, I'm standing here in victory today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But we don't give in to it. So we don't condemn ourselves. We don't beat ourselves up. But we don't just, we don't give in to poverty. We don't give in to sickness. We don't give in to things that are less than the best. Hallelujah. So you occupy by faith. Say occupy by faith. So sometimes it's the fight of faith. It's occupying by faith. It's saying no to sickness and yes to health. It's saying no to poverty and yes to provision and prosperity. It's knowing who we are in Christ and it's contending for that. So it, it's, 
This, there's a secret place in Christ, and in Christ we have the authority, but what are we going to do with the authority? We have to exercise that authority, and we have to, by faith, take the authority, take our place as the righteousness of God in Christ, the righteousness of God in the secret place, and take that authority and, and work it, we're not talking about dead works. We're talking about works of faith. Where we practice our faith and we contend. Because if that, if that thing could take me down, and I just roll over and it could take me down, what's going to take me down next week? Or the week after? So first of all, I learned, don't give any place to the devil. And, I mean, just don't do it. No matter how much you want to please your wife, don't give place to the devil. When you hear that still small voice, your very life might depend upon it. So you better believe me, the next time I hear that still small voice, I'm going to jump to attention. And if for some reason it's, something's going to get by me, I mean there's a immediate repentance, renewal of the mind. And then there's no condemnation, but instantly you just you take your place in Christ. And you drive that thing out. And you get back to where you should be. And, and that's, how, that's how we are in our marriage. I mean, if, there's, if we give place to the devil in our marriage and we say one or two things that are, you know, and offend one another. You don't just stay offended. You don't, some people don't talk over two, three days, four days. Forget about it. We, we don't go to bed and sleep if we're offended. I mean, it doesn't matter what our schedule is the next day. We'll sit down, we'll pray, and we'll sort it out before we go to bed. So you occupy by faith. You don't just let things. Because if you let, if the, you let the sun go down on your wrath by the next day, it's worse. Now it's even harder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you dwell by faith. So I need to dwell. I need to dwell. Say, I need to dwell in the secret place by faith. Okay, now let's look at the benefits of dwelling in the secret place. We're going to look at Psalm 91 in the light of the last days. Now I really believe, I was praying and I think when I get to heaven I'm going to find out that I was absolutely right in this. I don't have scripture to prove this, but this is just something that, that I personally believe. I believe that when Moses was up on the mountain and, and, he was, and the Lord was speaking to him face to face and when he came out and, and, and the Lord put the word, the Ten Commandments, that was a time of communion communion with Moses and Moses came back and his face was shining like the sun. I believe that Psalm 91 came from the mountain. I, I can't, like I say, we can't theologically prove that, but regardless of whether it came from the mountain, there was a time that I believe that Moses got a vision of you and I today, of the world that we're living in today. And he began to speak as an oracle of God to teach us and to equip us how to thrive in these tough times. Amen? So let's look at Psalm 91. He, and I've, in brackets I've added um, the revelation that we're giving here today. So what translation is that? I'll tell you where I've added things. Added and amplified. He, the last day believer, who dwells in Jesus by faith, or the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when we, when we dwell in Jesus by faith, we're in the shadow of the Almighty. We're in the shadow of the Father God. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ. Christ is at the right hand of the Father, in the shadow of the Father, so therefore we're seated in the very shadow of the Father, and that is our position in heavenly places. And the enemy is under our feet. Hallelujah. 
And so we have to positionally know where we are. And I believe Moses looked out at the last day's believers who would walk and live and have their being in God. He did not experience that. Only certain priests could go into the Holy of Holies for a short amount of time. But he did not know personally what it was like to live like we live today. To live and have our being in the Lord. With no other shadow over our head but the shadow of Father God, the Almighty. That is our position. And so we need to understand when, when we face whatever we face in the last days, we have to know what our position is. Because of Christ, because of the new covenant, I'm positioned at the right hand of the Father in Christ. Seated in heavenly places. Abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Then, verse 2, I will say of the Lord. Say the Lord. The Lord. Speaking about Jesus. I will say of the Lord. Or I will say of Jesus. He is my refuge and my fortress. It's not some place out there. He is. I will say of the Lord. He is. Who is? The Lord. Where is the secret place? The secret place is a person. It's called the Lord. He is my secret place. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And that snare of the fowler talks about it's like the one who poaches and sets up traps. Like a poacher. And from perilous pestilence or from deadly disease. I tell you there's more traps of offense and traps that the enemy is laying today in the last days. And I believe Moses looked forward into the last days and saw the enemy going about like a roaring lion seeking who he could devour. And all of the diseases and things floating around. And he said, I believe speaking to the church, church, he will deliver you. He will deliver you. You who dwell in the Lord, he will deliver you. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings... You shall take refuge. His truth, which is the word of God. So in other words, the word of God shall be your shield and your buckler. The word of God. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And then let's look from verse 5 to 7. This is powerful. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow, and I put in there, the, or the missile that flies by day, or of the pestilence, which that could be referring to chemical warfare, that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. So we're talking about mass fatalities. But it shall not come near you. So right there we have the word terror. In the last day, terrorism is such a big thing. It's talking about you shall not be afraid of the terror that comes by night when you least expect it. I mean, and people are scared to get in a train. They're scared to, to go to football games. They're scared everywhere. The Bible says as a believer, you don't have to be afraid to get an airplane. You don't have to, as a believer in Christ, who is engaged. I'm talking about believers that live by faith, that, that practice their faith. That confess the word and speak the word and walk according to the light of the new covenant. We can get on an airplane together with a terrorist. And he won't be able to put his bomb together. It'll be a safe flight. 
And if he managed to start putting his bomb together, he might have a heart attack and die. And you find out later, who, somebody died in the plane, they had a bomb in, the, in their backpack. Why'd they die? Because you're in the plane. You're practicing your faith. You're dwelling in Christ. You walk in according to the new covenant. And so terror cannot come near you. Near you means it, it can't come near you or anybody else. So when you're on a plane, the whole plane is safe. When you're applying your faith. You don't have to worry about, well, I, I, I sure hope terror is not going to... Terror is going to come to Hawaii. Terror is going to come everywhere, but it doesn't have to come near you. It doesn't have to come near any person who's in Christ, who's walking in the new covenant. God has provided and, and has looked forward towards the last days. And He's provided a secret place where we can dwell in safety. There's people that are dwelling in that secret place. I mean, every born again believer, you, you may not have known it, but you're dwelling in the secret place. That's why the church, church in China, where it's illegal to practice, they're dwelling in a secret place. Nobody can touch them. The church in North Korea... Where it's illegal to be a Christian. They're dwelling in the secret place. Nobody can touch them. They don't have to fear anything. Those people don't have any fear. They're bolder than... I mean, they've got more boldness than most of the people that we know. And so it talks about terror, nor the arrow. Now let's again... If it's talking about... And Moses saw... Something that he described as an arrow, as an arrow. I mean, what's that? That's a missile. And so, nor the arrow or the missile that flies by day. So we don't have to worry about missiles. Well, what if, what if North Korea? shoots a missile carrying a nuclear weapon right at Hawaii. Well, that's what I was talking about. We don't have to be afraid of that. Well, what if it lands right next door to your house? It doesn't change anything. That thing will explode. But because you're in the secret place, because you're in Christ, because you are walking... I mean, you living by faith and you're applying the new covenant, it's not going to come near you. It's going to go right over the top of your house. There's testimonies of people in the last hurricanes in Texas and, and in Florida. Testimonies of people where the, the storm came right up to their doorstep and it flooded the house, this side of them, the house, that side of them, the house behind them, but their house is still fine. There's testimonies of in the great earthquake of San Francisco of believers that were born again believers walking in, in the new covenant knowing who they were in Christ and everything was shaken to pieces and their building not even, not even a cup fell off a coffee, coffee table. It wasn't touched. I mean, so it doesn't matter. Anybody, I mean, we don't, we're going to pray against it. We don't want them lobbing nuclear weapons towards Hawaii, let's face it. But the fact is that even if they do, it's not going to come near us. It's not going to harm us. Even if a bomb goes off right next to you, it can go off in your lap for that matter. It's not going to harm you. The shrapnel will go all around you into the walls. We had some guys, there was a time when we were giving out coins to the military that would visit the church. And we would give out a coin and on the one side we would talk about the armor of God and the other side the name of the church. And there was a military family in the church and the husband was deployed. And so we said, well, why don't you take a bunch of these coins? One, we prayed over him. He took a bunch for his whole unit that went with him. 
And they went, I don't know, was it, was it Afghanistan? I think it was Afghanistan that went. It, and, and they went out over, and he was in a helicopter. And his whole unit, he gave them each a coin, they all had the coin. And they took fire. And the helicopter was shot full of holes. I mean, the helicopter was blown to pieces, full of holes, just everywhere. It looked like a, looked like a sift. And even though all those bullets went right through in the one side and out the other side, not one person in the helicopter was touched. So after it went down, I mean, they cut the thing into pieces. And, and he told us about it, or his wife told us about it. He had framed a piece of the helicopter with bullet holes in it and that coin next to it, and put it in a frame as a testimony of the protecting power of, the, of God. Where was he? He was in the secret place. I mean, how did the bullets go past all of them? Probably went through them, who knows? Or dodged around them. I don't know what happened. I just know they weren't touched. When you're dwelling in the secret place, it's not going to touch you. It's not going to come near you. And family, this is one of the reasons why we have to preach the gospel. Listen, the gospel in times past, talk about the good news. Well, what's the gospel? Well, it's good news. Well, what does that mean? I don't know if I really need Jesus. Well, maybe they could say that before. Not really, but they could maybe make an argument before. But in the last days that we're living in, the perilous times, Everybody's going to need this protection. Everybody's going to need this safe place. Everybody, because there's going to be terror. I mean, right throughout every nation of the world. And the only safe place is going to be in Christ. Abiding in the vine. Protected wherever we go. No fear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So it talks about, let me just go back to that. It says, a thousand, sorry, you can go back. A thousand may fall on your side and ten thousand at your right. I mean, it's talking about a thousand and then it's talking about ten thousand. So mass fatalities to your left and to your right. But it shall not come near you. You'll only see it with your eyes. You will look. In other words, you'll see it on TV, the internet, around you. You'll see the reward of the wicked. They pulled it off. They put another bomb. You'll see it. You'll read about it in the newspaper on wherever. And see it with your eyes. But it will not come near you. Because you're dwelling in Christ. Because you have made the Lord. Say the Lord. It will not come to you. Because you made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. You've made the Lord your dwelling place. And then it says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague, again it used the word plague, potentially chemicals of mass destruction, no plague shall come near you or your dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Now I'm not going to get into it today, but there's significance to the stone, the lion, the cobra and the young lion and the serpent or the dragon. They are all symbols that are very relative to the day that we live in today. And whether it's a stone, a lion, a young lion, a cobra, or a serpent or a dragon, whichever people groups that represents, it says you'll tread upon them. Because they're under your feet. You step right on the devil's head. And just go from glory to glory. And even though all of these things are happening around you. And a 
thousand to your right and ten thousand to your left and plagues and, and wars and rumors of wars and persecution and everything. It will not come near you. Hallelujah. I mean, there were disciples and apostles in, in, the, in the book of Acts. They would boil them in oil. And some of them would just sit there and, and boil and not and come out unharmed. Listen, until it's your time, when it's your time, then you just say, okay, I'm going to go be with the Lord. But until it's your time, you can dwell in a secret place and you'll be 100% safe all the time. And then it says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, seated in heavenly... And, and so I'll set him on high, which is to be seated in heavenly places with Christ. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me in Jesus' name. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will show him my salvation, protection, liberty, preservation, divine health, prosperity, hallelujah, and all blessing. I will show him. So therefore you can be blessed and prosperous even in all. Look at all the things that Psalm 91 describes. We're not talking about something... A time of peace. We're not talking. We're talking about a time of mass destruction and pestilence and disease and I mean missiles and all of the things going on. And yet, in the midst of this time, the Lord says, "I'll show him my salvation." And that word "salvation," even in the Hebrew, it doesn't just mean "I'll rescue him." It, the word "salvation." It, it's the same thing as what the Greek word sozo is protection and preservation and prosperity and, and divine health and uh, hallelujah. Every, every, every blessing from above in the midst of all of this. So we're not talking about, oh, we're going to have such a, you know, look, the palm trees in Hawaii are always going to be swaying. But there's, there's some bad stuff happening around the world today, even right now. And we can get into politics all we want. But the Bible talks about how it's going to end up. And so therefore we need to know who we are. And who we are in Christ. And engage ourselves. Engage ourselves. And as we do. I mean, I just I, I encourage you to go back to Psalm 91. And just read Psalm 91. Just read it several times. Meditate on it as a last day prophetic word and, and just just chew on it and meditate on it over and over and let it feed your spirit I mean there's so many other scriptures we can connect to Psalm 91 and and but family we need to know those of you watching we need to know who we are in Christ and we need to live in Christ by faith this new covenant is not just it's not as the Lord spoke to me about the new covenant, He said, I'm not, son, I'm not giving you a new doctrine. I'm not giving you a new doctrine to teach in the church. He said, we have to, my people have to be equipped. It's a matter of life and death. Generations have served Jesus and, and talked about the new covenant and had a little bit of revelation here and there. But there's... Heaven is dumping revelation regarding the new covenant onto me and onto you and onto this generation right now. You seek the Lord regarding the new covenant and, and He just all of a sudden, I mean, it's just revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Which will cause you to walk and live and have your being in a whole different way. Hallelujah. Let's just pray for those watching online right now in the name of Jesus. We just release the blessing of the Lord upon you. And I just declare to you that you can be safe and secure. Even, I don't know what area of the world that you're living in. But <laughs> you have a secret place. And His name is Jesus. And as you live and move and have your being in the Lord. You're safe and secure. Under the shadow of the Almighty. No sickness will come your way. Hallelujah. 
No disease will come your way. Hallelujah. You're protected in Christ. And not only protected, but you get to prosper. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we bless you right now. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed. You're coming in. You're going out. And all you do. And dwell in the secret place by faith. We love you. God bless you.